Hello students, welcome to your tutorial for Moonlight Sonata. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is play this song all the way through for you, just so you can hear how it's all going to come together. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. Right, so pretty and what we're gonna start with is actually the bass part all right um, some of these bass notes might be new to you but because we have our um, finger number to start off we can use our intervals and our finger numbers to help us find our way through this bass part okay so let's First, just acknowledge we have, um, we're in the key of one sharp. So that means that all Fs are sharp in this song. There are no Fs in the bass part. Okay, the only Fs that you're gonna find in this song are in the right hand and they have actually already been um, either relabeled as sharp or as natural. Here we have one that um, is at the end of a measure that has a sharp in it. So. We're not going to have too much to worry about in terms of um, finding our F sharps. But let's go ahead to our bass part. So our left hand thumb starts on this E, which is the right below the F that is below middle C. So here's middle C, here's the F, and here's our first note. Then we go down just a step to the D with our second finger. Then we go down another step to the C with our third finger, then skip to our fifth finger on A, fourth finger on B, another B, and then back up to our E. And again. All right, so even with these being new notes, we can make our way through that entire bass part fairly simply, and I want you to do that and get it into your fingers, because we need your left hand to build up some muscle memory, because your right hand has a lot of work to do, and we don't want your left hand to be um, holding up your right hand, because uh, it does have um, some complexity, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and play the bass part all the way from the beginning. One, two, three, four, E, two, three, four, down to D, two, three, down to C, down to A, up to B, again, now back to E, two, three, four, E, two, three, four. All right, now I want you to play that bass part again with me, but I'm gonna add the right hand back in. All right, so we're gonna go all the way through. You are just worrying about the notes we just learned. Ready? One, two, three, four, E. Down to D.
down to C to A up to B again and E and E Very nice. Okay, so spend some time working on that bass part. Now we're going to look at the right hand. And your right hand starts out by breaking a chord. that It's, it's the E minor chord. So if you know anything about chords, an E minor chord is an E, a G, and a B. All right? And so we are actually putting that B on the bottom and we're going to play those three notes with our thumb, our two, and our three. And now this is a probably a very new movement for you. One, two, three. So your first two fingers are spanning a fourth and then your two to your three is a third. All right, that's probably pretty new, but we want to get used to using our fingers in new ways on this song because we have some interesting shapes to make. All right, so let's just go ahead and start. That's the whole first two uh, two measures, okay? So let's try that together. Um, and I should point out that this B that we put below, see what it looks like? It's the note right under the C line. So that would make sense. That's the B. B, E, G. Let's do it that slowly over and over again. Here we go. B, E, G. 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 G, B, E, G. That's it. That's the first line of the right hand. Do you remember that we started our left hand on an E and then we held it for four beats and went down to a D? All right, that's all we're going to do. So each one of these broken chords makes what's called a triplet. All right, you see this three here? That means that those three eighth notes are actually creating one beat. So it's not one and two and three and four and one. And, okay, that's too many beats in this measure. It's just one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three. Four, two, three. Your ear has already told you that, but now we also understand the count and the symbol as well. So we're going to start this together. We're going to play our thumbs at the same time. The E in the left hand, the B of our triplet in the right hand. All right, you ready? And we're going to continue with the triplets all the way until the second measure. So I'm going to count to four. One, two, three, four, and go. Now what are we going to do? We're going to start the second measure with our second finger in the left hand, thumb in the right hand. Here, two, two. Three, four, and go. All right, let's do that whole line. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two. Very 
nice. Now we're going to go to the second line. So you're probably going to spend some time on that first line. But for the tutorial, I'm going through the whole song. So let's look at the second line. So I'm going to put my left hand away for a little while so that my right hand can get down to business. So we're still going to be playing one, two, and three, but we're no longer going to stretch down to that B. For the first two triplets, we're just going to play C, E, G, C, E, G. It's a little easier. It's just a C chord, right? C, E, G, C, E, G. But then something happens. The, your second finger is going to move to an F natural, and your fourth finger is probably already resting on this A. And now we're going to play C, F, A. C, F, A. So we went from C, E, G, C, E, G, to C, F, A. C, F, A. But notice, not only did our notes change, but our finger numbers changed. We went from 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 on C, E, G, to 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4 on C, F, and A. So I want you to spend some time with that. And I want you to go back to the beginning of the song and play your B, E, G several times, then your C, E, G a couple of times, then your one, two, four on C, F, A, C, F, A. So you really start to remember the pattern and how each of the triplets changes, okay? All right, so once you have done that right hand section um, on measure three, I think I'd like to continue with the right hand through measure four. So we've done our one, two, three. We've done our one, two, four. Now we're gonna go back to that B that we liked so much, and we're gonna continue with the one, two pattern but now instead of an E and instead of an F, we're playing a what? A D sharp. And then our fifth finger's taking over where our fourth finger was on that A. B, D sharp, A. So let's go ahead and do up to there from this line. We had a C, E, G, C, E, G, then a C, F, F natural, A, C, F natural, A, stretch down to B, D sharp, A, then we're going to keep the B, and we're going to keep the second finger, but on an E, now a G with our fourth finger, keep the B, keep the second finger on E, but an F sharp with our third finger, then we're gonna lose the B. We're stretching down for this A. We have our D sharp again, and another F sharp. All right, so you guys, that's a lot of changes in one measure. So the best thing you can do is understand what you're reading and keep reading it over and over until your fingers start to know what to do. Your ears and your fingers take over what your eyes and your brain are figuring out by looking at the page. So we're gonna play the second line, right hand only, several times right now with me calling out what you're seeing, but please be looking at your music, all right? Look at your music as you're finding the notes with me on the piano. Otherwise, you're relying on your memory and you're relying on Miss Marilyn calling it out and that's not going to be helpful for very long. Okay, so the second line, uh, starting on C. Here we go. C, E, G. C, E, G. Changing C. F natural, A, C, F natural, A, move down 
to the B, D sharp, five on A, B, E, G, B, E, F sharp, down to A, D sharp, F sharp. Again, we're doing it again. Here we go. C, E, G, C, E, G, C, F, A, C, F, A, B, D sharp, a, B, E, G, B, E, F sharp, stretch down, A, D sharp, F sharp. Okay, now make sure, absolutely sure, that you're using the fingering that's written on the page. I am not kidding about that. This is way too hard to make it harder by changing the fingering every time. Remember, I've already said a couple of times, we're making shapes. We're making shapes. And you change the shape if you change the finger. So please make sure you're absolutely 100% following the fingering or else, guess what? It's wrong. All right? It's not correct. And your teacher will, will ask you to change it. So you don't want to learn it one way only for your teacher to ask you to change it because what will likely happen students is you'll get it 70% your way but you'll still keep having errors and then we'll say you got to start all over and do it our way and you'll think but I'm at 70% and we'll say yeah but 70% when you've chosen the wrong fingering for this passage or you've chosen different fingering every time you play it is never ever gonna get to 100%. So we need you to follow the very specific instructions. So this time I'm gonna play it through one more time and I'm not calling out the letters anymore, I'm calling out the finger numbers. All right, so here we go, same line. One, two, three, here we go, one, you'll be ready to put your left hand with this for a little while but I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate the next phase of your um, pulling the song together and that is to bring the left hand in all right so we've played our bass notes for the first line were E down to D and now this line we have the C we have the A and we have the B that gets repeated. So again, there's so much independence needed in your hands so that you can be remembering with your right hand to make whatever changes are happening there while your left hand is finding its right note at the right time. The only way from here to there, kids, is repetition. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Play it over and over and over and over, hand separately, calling out the note names, calling out the fingerings until you can start to put them together. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put them together nice and slow, calling out what I'm doing in my left hand. Second line, okay? One, two, three, two. Four and my C down to A up to B. Repeat my B. All right, that's it. 
it. All right, they're together now. All right, so let's, so you can play that over and over again uh, on the video and play just the left hand, just the right hand, and then put them both together. But what I'm gonna do right now is look at the right hand of the very last line. Now the very last line is tricky because we start with a ledger line that's unfamiliar. Okay, that's a G. It's the G below middle C. Um, and then we have to climb all the way up to this E at the top of the staff. But here's what's actually helpful. Do you remember that E minor chord from the beginning? It's got an E, it's got a G, and it's got a B. That's all we're playing. We're just twisting and turning it upside down. So we start, remember, E, G, and B. We're gonna put the G on the bottom, and then the B, and then the E. Those were our first three notes of the last line. Then we're gonna put the B on the bottom, and then we're gonna play the E, and then we're gonna play the G. Those were the next three notes. Now we're gonna put the E on the bottom, and then the G, and then the B. And then we're gonna put the G on the bottom, again, like we did at the beginning of this line. And there we are. So selecting your notes is not as tricky on this line as it was on the previous line, but let's go through it nice and slow one more time and get the finger choices, okay? So we're gonna do it out of time. Play your thumb on G, second finger on B, and then fifth finger on E. Now my thumb's gonna take over. Thumb on B, second finger on E. This time we're gonna go to four because it's not as far a movement. That's why we're going to four. Thumb takes over again to start over. One, two on G, again to four. Thumb takes over again, one, two, and now we have the bigger stretch of a fourth, so we are gonna go to our five, and then we're gonna land. All right, let's play that in time, but nice and slow. One, two, sorry, one, two, three, four. G, B, E, B, E, G, E, G, B, G, B, E, E. Again, here we go. G, B, E, B, E, G. B, G, B, E, E. All right, and the cool news on this one is what chord did I say we were playing? E minor? The left hand bass part is just our thumb on E, once for each measure. So we can put that together, I think, without even um, practicing them separately again. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and together. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is play the entire song for you again um, at a I can't remember what tempo I played at the beginning of the song. So I'm gonna do a really, 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 really slow tempo. And then I'm gonna do more of a performance slow tempo. All right, so let me get myself some metronome counts here. All right, here's my super slow play along when you're ready. Even slow. One, two, three, four.
right, now that could actually, for some classes, be your performance tempo. We can play this song as slowly as we want to, but if we decide um, not quite. I think I'll go a tiny bit slower than that. So this is set at let's set at 47 equaling the um the beat. So let's just try that once through as well. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Have 